Okay, hello everybody. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about persuasive speeches and um, I will attach this to announcement. So in the announcement, I'm going to list all the due dates. You have a few things left due. Um, so I'm going to list the order that you should be working on those in and the due dates for each of those. So please check the announcement for that. For this, what I want to do is introduce persuasive speaking, go over the topics for you, um, sorry, the guidelines for you. You should, uh, it's a good idea while you're watching this video, if you follow along with the rubric that I have in the persuasive speech folder. The other thing you'll notice in the persuasive speech folder is there's an Esquire article and then also another sheet that just throws out some potential topics um, for persuasion. Um, you should be reading chapter 15, which is the chapter on persuasion. And the quiz will be just on chapter 15. The last quiz will be just on chapter 15. And it will also have some short answer questions. Um, most of the short answer questions you can also find in the chapter, but you should be aware of in the last lecture when we talked about the difference between inform and motivate and persuade and coerce. You should know those differences. Um, eat those pesos logos, the motivated sequence design, know all those for the short answer type questions. Okay, so um, make sure you have your persuasive speech requirements here and let's talk about that. So the first thing is uh, you want to make sure you're choosing a persuasive topic. In the last lecture, I talked about um, the difference between informative and persuasive, motivational and persuasion. So make sure you're choosing a topic that has different sides, that the sides are clearly defined, people agree or disagree with each side, and so there's some sort of debate. Hopefully the topic that you're choosing is something you agree strongly about, or at the very least, it should be something that you want to know more about. Um, don't, it's, it's a bad idea to just choose a topic because you have to choose a topic um, and you don't really care about it. Also think about your audience. So again, you're videotaping these, but you want to think that you are presenting this to an audience. And so you should keep a classroom full of Obansi students in mind when you're choosing a topic that might be um, interesting for them to learn or uh, beneficial for them to learn. And then also don't choose anything illegal or dangerous or that type of thing. Okay, so the basic requirements for this speech, the speech needs to be seven to 10 minutes long. Again, you'll lose points for over or under. Um, haven't had a lot of points um, lost for time, so that's good. And most people, if you lose points for time, go over, not under. So doing pretty good there. Again, you'll need to turn in a typed outline uh, before you give your speech and a typed work cited page before you give your speech. So you'll attach those to the email, put your name, persuasive speech, attach the work cited and the outline, and then click the um, YouTube video link in there. And Again, like I said before, we're going to talk about the intro. You'll you'll turn in a rough draft of your intro. So basically, you can turn in a rough draft of your intro anytime now, and I will give you feedback on it. It's 20 points. Please do it. It, it lets me make sure that you have a right, the right topic and that type of thing. I will send it back to you. Also, um, some of you sent me topics when you were doing your informative speech that seemed to be a little more persuasive in nature. And if you could just resend those to me as your new intros you, you already have them done or whatever but just resend those to me just so i can make sure because um, i want to make sure you get credit for those and the formatting might be a little different when we go over the outline so send in your um intro to me before you give your speech then once you get the feedback back then you can go ahead and um, record your speech and again check the um so next Friday is the last day of the class. The Everything should be done by then. Okay, so you should have your final speech into me by next Friday. All right, so for this speech, you're gonna have five sources. Um, so we're incrementally getting um, bigger for each speech. Again, make sure they're credible sources. Um, Make sure you're utilizing more than just websites so you do have access to the Wobansi Library, which has a lot of books 
and I know a lot of public libraries too. So if you live in Aurora or um, wherever your local library is, I bet they have some sort of, um, like I know my library here in DeKalb has pretty much almost all of their books or maybe not all their books, but they have, I think it's like 75,000 or something books online that you can access. So um, books are available, journal articles. Um, and so what I'm looking for in this speech is that you're using at least two different types of sources. So a book, and again, you're gonna access them online probably, unless you have a book already in your home, but you can't go to the library to get a book right now or a journal article. But if you go to like Google Scholar say, and download um, a journal article from online, you cite it as the journal article. So that counts as two different sources. So just because you're accessing them online um, doesn't necessarily mean they're all the same type of source. So I want you to use at least two different types of sources this time. And it's your choice on which ones you use, I don't care. And then the other thing is make sure you are clearly citing these. So according to the National Cancer Society, is that a thing? American Cancer Society? whatever, um, according to Time Magazine. So make sure you are clearly citing each of your sources. And it's a great idea if in your outline, you either at, at the very least put the notation that you're citing, but if you write out the whole quote, that just makes it easier when I'm going along to grading, it's clear that you have those in there and there's no, um, there's no dispute on if you cited that source or not when it's when it's listed in there and exactly where it's going to be. So it's a good idea in your outline to write out your quotes and the sources and have them in your outline as well. So five sources in the body of the speech to to present um, to back up your topic. And then just like always, you're going to want to speak in um, an ex excuse me, an extemporaneous manner. And just like you're having a conversation with the audience instead of um, trying to read or memorize or that type of thing. Most of you have been doing a really good job on that. So your presentations have all been pretty great. I, I try not to like say perfect presentation because I feel like we all have things that we can work on, you know, a little bit and get better and, and make a better presentation. But overall, the presentations have been pretty stellar. So good job on that. So let's go to the outline and for the most part um, you know it still has an intro body and conclusion but what we're going to be doing is following uh, Monroe's motivated sequence design for this and this is one design where um, it's kind of a universal design and according to Monroe and again there's people that dispute this but according to Monroe he did a lot of research and, and looked at the different things that persuade people and how they could do that and, and so he he came up with this way to present information and seemed to think it was the best. Okay, so the motivated sequence design has five steps. The first step is called the attention step. And the purpose of the attention step is to get the audience's attention, to introduce your topic, to form a rapport with the audience, that type of stuff. So it's, I know if you read some places, it says the attention step is not the intro, but it kind of is the intro. So for, for our class, we're going to use the introduction as this first attention step. So just like the last two speeches, your intro is gonna have five parts. First, your attention getter. This should be the first thing that you say or do. First thing out of your mouth is the attention getter. And you should, um, like don't introduce yourself, don't introduce your topic, attention getter, and make sure it's a strong attention getter. Thesis, today I'm going to be persuading you that blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, you could just say the topic. Coke is better than Pepsi. That's not a great topic. Preference topics like that aren't a great topic because it's hard to prove. Like, I just like the taste of Coke better than Pepsi, but I'm using that as an example for this. Your credibility statement. Remember, your credibility statement, give um, a little bit of information about why you know about this topic. So at the very least, each of you have been researching the topic for the last couple of weeks uh, for this speech. So that's credibility right there, but you might have credibility above and beyond that. Motivation statement, why is this beneficial? Why is this information beneficial to the audience? What is the audience gonna get out of this? And then your preview statement. 
And for this preview statement, everybody, so everybody's using the same main points for this. Um, so your preview statement will say, first, I'm going to tell you the problem, then I'm going to tell you the solution, then I'm going to um, help you visualize this, and then I'm going to give you some actions. Okay, and those four things are the steps two through five in the motivated sequence design. So you have your, the first step in the motivated sequence design is attention, then steps two, three, four, and five are going to be your four main points in the body of your speech. Okay, so um, now we're to the body of the speech. So this is step two in the motivated sequence design, but it's number one in your, um, it's the first main point in the body of the speech. And what this step is called is sometimes called the need or the problem. And so basically what you're doing in this step is you're providing facts and statistics to tell us about the problem. So what is wrong with the world that you propose to change? So we live in a world where Pepsi is the number one drink in America. That's not true, I don't think. But um, So let's just say that's a problem. Too many people are drinking Pepsi. All right, so then um, you would provide facts and statistics um, about that problem. Or I'm going to use a different example. Not a lot of people use this one. So let's say we're talking about the death penalty and you are... Um, opposed to the death penalty. So the problem then would be that the death penalty still exists and your facts and statistics would back up, you know, 200,000 Americans have lost their lives to the death penalty. And again, I'm making all these up. I have no idea about the statistics, the actual statistics of the death penalty. Um, DNA testing has shown that out of those people that have been executed, at least 25% of them were later exonerated due to new DNA evidence or new technology. So that means a lot of people are, are dying. Um, it costs this much money to execute someone, that type of thing. Okay, so that's the problem. And then your support is facts and statistics that back up that problem. All right, then you're going to add in your transition. Most of you did great with transitions last time, but just as a refresher, a transition is something that relates it 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 relates one main point to the next main point. So basically you say, I've just told you about this, now I'm going to tell you about this. So I've just talked to you about the problem with the world of the death penalty, now I'm going to tell you um, a solution to that problem. And so that's the next step of the motivated sequence, the solution, or sometimes it's called the satisfaction, depending on which um, model you're looking at. Okay, so this again, facts and statistics um, about your solution. Tell us how your proposal makes things better, how it will help. It will save the United States this much money. It will um, stop innocent people from dying, blah, 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 blah. So again, facts and statistics that back up your point of view. Then, Another transition. I've just told you about the solution. The next thing you do is called the visualization. And the visualization step, according to Maslow is, or according to Monroe, sorry, is where you, and you'll see these this in quotations some, in some books, tug at the heartstrings of the audience. So here you've laid, you know, before this, you've laid out the problem, you've laid out the solution, you've provided facts and statistics, data to back that up. The point of the visualization is to provide emotional support for your topic. So in this part of the speech, what you want to do is provide that emotion. Tell some stories, maybe. Um, provide descriptive and meaningful uh, explanations of the problem. Not with the facts and statistics like before, but with stories or pictures. Um, you know now that it's a lot. So people used to do texting and driving a lot. So a very um, powerful thing about texting and driving, and this isn't a great topic anymore because um, there's, you know, we pretty much know that it's bad for you to text and drive. Um, but, you know, they'd show a picture of somebody who's texting and driving and, and this horrific car crash. Okay, so that is a visualization. 
or you can tell the story about somebody. You can tell the story of Charles who had a wife and three children and was wrongfully accused and spent his life on death row and to the end maintained his innocence um, only to find five years later that he was telling the truth and that he didn't commit the crime because they had DNA evidence that exonerated him or whatever. So that's not facts and statistics. That's one man's story. You know, it's backing up the statistics that you said before that 25% of people are wrongfully executed. But now this is actual, um, this is an actual story that backs that up. So the visualizations are stories and you should have two different stories for this speech. This isn't something Monroe said, but for this speech, I'm requiring two different stories. So you have one story that helps illustrate the need. Okay. And then you have one story that helps illustrate the solution. So maybe you tell about Oklahoma who doesn't have the death penalty. And because that person was just serving life in prison, this guy, after he was exonerated, you know, Mike, after he was exonerated, got out and got to see his family and friends again and that type of thing. If, if they would have had the death penalty, he would have been executed. So here's a story that illustrates how bad the world is, you know, and it's basically a story that um, connects to the need. And then here's a story that connects to the solution or the satisfaction that shows how good the world is if you do what I propose. And you can have those in either order. Um, it doesn't matter. It, once you put your speech together, the flow of the speech will make sense. Okay, so then um, you have another transition and then your final, your fourth main point in the body of the speech is your call to action. And so what you've done now is you've convinced them with facts, you've tugged at their heartstrings, providing them with stories. The action part is now giving them specific, giving your audience specific things to do. You're assuming you've persuaded them. Now here's some specific things that they can do, that they can go out into the world and do in order to support your um, topic. So for example, um, here's a petition to get the death penalty, um, to make sure we don't have the death penalty in Illinois. Or here is a, well now it would be like a Zoom group that you can attend. So here's an organization that fights for this. You can join their Facebook group or you can sign up to um, attend a Zoom meeting with um, with the people who are like-minded. Or you can give money at this place. Or you can go and write a letter to this person or whatever. But these should be specific actions that the audience can do in support of whatever it is you were trying to persuade them. So let's say you persuaded them and now they wanna take action. They wanna do something about it. How can they help? What can they do? Um, in support of your point of view. Okay, and then you have the conclusion. And the conclusion is just like the other speeches. So you have um, your main points. I've just told you about the problem with the death penalty, uh, how we can solve that problem. I've, show, I've told you some stories about that and I've given you some actions that you can take. And then restate your motivation again. Um, this is an important uh, societal issue. And now by listening to me today, you are more informed about some of the factors. And then your closing remarks are best when they relate back to your attention getter. And again, closing remarks are best when they relate back to your attention getter. So make sure you do that. Okay, so this outline that I provided is very, very detailed. So I would recommend downloading the outline and using this as a guide. I want you to turn in an outline, not an essay. So make sure you are using this outline and just fill in your parts to the outline, okay? And again, I put a little note on here that it's it's better if you, um, in the outline, if you put little um, notations where your, your quotes are going to be. And then you have your works cited page, five sources, um, five sources. It should be in either APA or MLA style, whichever one you choose. So. Um, good luck with these persuasive speeches. If you have any questions, let me know. And again, look at the announcement I sent. So I'm going to go through. There's You have like four things left to do. I'm going to go through all the things that you have left to do. Make sure you check those off. Also, make sure and go back and check if, if you're missing any assignments from the past. 
Um, some of you are missing speech grades. Usually uh, it's because I'm missing something from you. So your link doesn't work or you didn't send an outline or that type of thing. So um, if you are missing any of those, let me know. And good luck. Send me your intros as soon as you have them done. Okay, and I can grade them for you. Again, if you finish the class early, then you just don't have to think about it anymore. So um, let's, um, and, and again, make sure you're going onto Blackboard and checking your grades and making sure you have a grade for everything. And if you're missing a grade for something, let's figure out why. Um, okay, so have a wonderful day. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day um, outside and hope you are staying safe. Email me if you have any questions and bye-bye.